Hey all you physicists, welcome to the next lesson in the Modern Physics playlist and today we are talking about the four fundamental forces of nature. Now I know that um, I haven't been uh, active for the past how many months already so um, I apologize for that but let's move on, let's get things started off. So the last lesson that we did was um, on the standard model of particle physics and we talked about the different types of particles and gauge bosons or force carriers that are in our universe and what the what the setup model uh, um, does what it um, accomplishes is it categorizes all the different particles that are in the universe and there are tons of them all right but how do those particles like without forces those particles will be useless so how do particles interact with one another in our everyday life to give us the universe that we have today so there are basically four fundamental forces in nature and they are let me just go on the list the strong force the electromagnetic force the weak force and gravity and i've listed them in order of strength so the strong force is obviously the weakest i mean strong <laughs> strongest wow and then we go all the way down to gravity and yes the weak force isn't the weakest um, gravity is all right, so let's start off by this with the strong force. Okay, so, um, where, um, this lesson I'm just gonna give you like a quick overview of these forces, and in future lessons I'm gonna dedicate one whole lesson to each of these strong forces. So don't worry if, if I don't cover everything in this lesson, just a quick overview. All right, so let's just um before we start anything, let's just uh, create some titles, some some uh, categories for us to uh, compare these forces together. So our first category, I'm going to call it strength. Just to um, give us a feel of, of, of how strong they are relative to each other. And next one is going to be the range. And then the next one is the particle or the force carrier particle that mediates that force, that, carry, that carries out the force. So let's start off with the strong force that I'm going to use, uh, I guess, green. No, actually red. Red is, sounds like a strong color. So, um, let's, let's, f for the strength of strong force, let's call it X, alright? Let's call it X. So, for each of, of the strengths of the following um, forces, I'll make it relative to X. Alright, so, the strong force is the strongest force, and what it does is it basically, as, as, as this picture shows, it binds together um, protons and neutrons in the nucleus. Um, if the strong force wasn't there, we know that um, the protons are are like are positively charged, and because of that, they should repel each other due to the, the electromagnetic force, which we will be talking about later on. But because like charges repel, the protons should actually repel from each other, and the nucleus should not even be stable at all. So how is so how are the the, the protons staying together? Well, it's because of the strong force. The strong force is basically it binds together all these. Uh, um, protons and nucleons, uh, neutrons together, and we'll talk more about that later on because there are actually two parts of the strong force. One is called the fundamental force, the fundamental strong force, which is basically mediated by the what's called as the color charge, and it's it's kind of weird the color charge. And the other one is called the residual force, which is what we see in um, protons and neutrons, how they are um, bind bound together. The fundamental force is more of the actual quarks that are inside the uh, inside the um, the proton. So let me use like white, I guess. The the different quarks in the, in, in the in the proton that's mediated by the the fundamental force, but the residual force is what is going on between the protons. All right, so let's move on again to range. Now the range of the strong force is about mm, ten to negative fifteen meters, and this is about the diameter of a nucleus, so just enough range to mediate the to hold the nucleus together. And the particle that uh, that keeps this together, that mediates the strong force, is known as the gluon because it basically glues the 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 nucleons together. And what nucleons are? Nucleons are basically protons and neutrons. Any any combination of protons and, and, and neutrons. All right. So collectively, protons and neutrons are known as nucleons. And I'm gonna write it down. Here. Nucleons, basically, um, it's basically protons and neutrons. All right. 
So if you hear that word, that, that's what that means. Um, the next one is the actual magnetic, magnetic force, and we normally think of light as yellow, so I'm going to use yellow for the electromagnetic force. So how about, what is it? The, the electromagnetic force um, is actually a combination of two different forces that we used to think are separate. One is electricity, so the electrostatic force, and magnetism, so magnetic force. But we we came to realize that these two were, the, were, the, were actually the same thing, and this is actually what light is. Light is basically a combination of the electric field and the magnetic field to form the electromagnetic field, and that's what light is. And we'll go into more detail about that in, in the future lesson. Um, so let's talk about the strength. The strength of the electromagnetic force relative to the strong force is about x over 1 to the 37th. So 1 1 37th x is basically the, the relative force, the strength of the electromagnetic force. The range, alright, the range of the electromagnetic force is actually infinite. It's actually infinite. And the particle that mediates this force is the photon. Alright, okay, one quick disclaimer. The photon that I, that I talk about here is not like the photon of light that you normally talk about. The photon that I'm talking about here is actually a virtual particle, and I'll dedicate one whole lesson about that because virtual particles are kind of hard to understand. Um, they are basically um, bound by the uncertainty principle, and I'll just, it's like this. Um, <clears throat> and I'll dedicate one whole les lesson about that because virtual particles actually confused me in the very start because when I was learning about this, when I was like research researching this, I was like, so does that mean that when I have two magnets, let's say I'm going to draw a magnet here, does that mean that photons of light actually actually um, travel past them? So that means that there's actually light that travels. So I looked it up and it's not actually photons of light that travel. It's actually virtual photons, so it's it's different. It's not actually light. It's a virtual particle. It's not actually there. It's not real. <laughs> well, it's real, but okay, I'll talk about that later. Okay, so that's the electromagnetic force, which is mediated by the virtual particle photon. The weak force is probably the hardest to grasp um, for anyone. It's basically responsible for radioactive decay. So beta decay, beta uh, beta minus and beta plus decay. So positron or, or um, positron or um, electron decay. Um, and I'll dedicate one whole lesson to that as as same as the other forces. But this one's probably the hardest one to grasp. Um, in terms of strength, um, it's about ten to the negative six x, right? Um, in terms of the range. <laughs> It's about 10 to the negative 18 meters. So it's about this length, this distance is about 0.1% of the diameter of a proton, of a proton. So if, if you were to look at the strong force, this was uh, b re um, about the diameter of a medium-sized nucleus, right? But this is about the size of a proton. So you can see the relative force here. And the... And the Particles that mediate the weak force, there are three of them. There's the W plus, the W minus boson, and the Z neutral boson. All right, and that's basically the weak force. And gravity, the force that we thought we knew the most, the, the gravity that everybody knows about, is actually the least known forces out of all of these. The reason why we haven't found this particle, and we think that it's called the graviton. But we haven't found evidence of that yet because gravity is so weak, so weak that we can't really. Um, uh, it's really hard to find it. Um, the strength. It's about this much of x. So look at that number, that the mag magnitude, compared to x. I mean that is weak. <laughs> All right. Um, however, the range of gravity is infinite, like the electromagnetic force. Oh no, I use the same color. Oh, this this is gonna bug me forever. Oh man, look at that. It's all different colors and then when I came here I forgot to change the colors. Dang it. Alright, let's just pretend that this is some other shade of green, alright? <laughs> just pretend. Okay. So yeah, this is the overview of what 
um, of the four fundamental um, forces. And before I leave, I just want to talk about the range. Why is it, some people will probably ask in the comments, why is it that gravity and the electromagnetic force are infinite, whereas weak force and the, the strong force are not? What determines this, the range? Okay, so basically what, what, um, why gravity and the electromagnetic force has infinite range is because the graviton, let me just use, uh, the graviton, um, and the photon are both massless, so they have zero mass. And because of this, they can travel at the speed of light, and can travel any distance. Because they can travel at the speed of light, they aren't, okay, because they have zero mass, they aren't um, restricted by, they don't interact with the Higgs field, the Higgs field and the Higgs boson, which, which, um, which is the reason of why things have mass. So they don't interact with the Higgs field, so they can travel at the speed of light. So because of this, they can interact at large amounts of distances. Whereas the weak force actually has mass. The, the, these three bosons have masses. So that is why um, they have a limited range because they interact with the, Hig the, the Higgs field. All right. But the exception to the list is the gluons. The gluons actually have zero mass, and because they have zero mass, you would think that just like the photon and the graviton, they should not interact with the Higgs field and therefore travel at speed of light and have infinite range. But gluons don't. They only have a limited range. Why? That is because the gluons actually interact with themselves. And because they interact with themselves, they the 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 range of 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 its in, of its um of its capability, I guess, is limited because before they travel um like a like a like a large distance, they interact with themselves and boom, they're useless now. All right, so that's why the blue ones have have that limited range. Okay, hopefully you guys um got a quick overview of what's going on. Don't don't worry if you don't really have a good grasp of what each of these forces are. I just wanted to go over over each of them in um in a quick summary and I will go in more detail in future lessons all right so hopefully you guys um, understood what the four fundamental forces of nature are and how they relate to the particles that mediate them all right peace out